Last season, regarding the rebuild with the Buffalo Sabres, things were looking absolutely fantastic. Tage Thompson, he picked up over 40 goals and he was looking like an absolute superstar. Alex Tuck and Jeff Skinner, they were both over a point a game, while Casey Milstad and Dylan Cousins both had career seasons. The defense is headlined by two amazing young talents in Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power, while in between the pipes, Devin Levi came to the show last season, he was looking absolutely fantastic and everything looked great for this team. However, it's safe to say that this team has not lived up to expectations right now. Not only are they not sitting in a playoff spot, but they're also bottom 10 in the entire league. The Buffalo Sabres should be much better than this, so it's time for Stick on the Ice to take over, not only to turn this team around, but I'm going to win them a couple Stanley Cups. However, regarding the rebuild around the Buffalo Sabres, we can't rush the process here. We have a lot of amazing young talent here, and if we rush the process, we're guaranteed to screw this up. So we got to take it slow and steady. A lot of these guys are locked down to long-term deals, and that's going to work out for us in the long run. However, there's a couple guys we got to bring back here, and we're going to start with Casey Milstadt. That's a fact. Now, Casey Milstadt, you only want two seasons. I'd love to do more than that. An eight-year deal at 6.2 isn't necessarily the worst deal in the world. We might be doing that. So how about we meet in the middle here? We'll do an eight-year extension at $5.5 million. I feel like that's going to work out for both sides. Not only are we going to be locking you down to a great long-term deal, but you're also going to be securing the bag here, so I don't think anyone's going to be complaining. And with our second deal, you might think that Stick on the Ice has completely lost his mind here. Henry Yoki Haru, five years at 2.1 million. Not only does Henry Yoki Haru seem to make big time plays in big time moments, but once we get to year seven of the rebuild, for an 81 overall, a guy on a contract like 2.1, that's an absolute steal or 2.2, whatever I signed him for. Once you get about seven seasons down the line, for some reason, 80 overalls want $6 million. So this deal is definitely gonna age well for us. So we know what the plan is. We've given out a couple extensions. We're not gonna rush the process here. We'll see what happens this season and we'll make moves accordingly. But I can tell you right now, we're not gonna be trading any of the young talent away, but we might trade some older guys away. You just never know what's gonna happen. Also, while the season simulates here, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only am I still trying to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers, I'm still trying to hit 55k subs by the end of the month, so if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Okay, so I didn't necessarily think that the Buffalo Sabres were going to be one of the best teams in the entire league, but I didn't think we were going to be one of the worst. Are we actually the worst team here? 27th in the entire league with a 27, 32, and 5 record. If we can get the first overall pick, I guess it's going to be worth it, but no, nah, we should be a lot better than this. So just by looking at statistics here, it's pretty clear where our issue is. Our first line's fantastic. Tage Thompson, 83 points, Jeff Skinner, 72, and then Alex Tucky's got 56. The problem is basically every single player outside of that first line because the rest of this team absolutely cooked. And then when it comes to the goaltending numbers, I'm just assuming these suck. Yuko Pekka Lukanen, I mean, 21 wins, four shots, a 910 and 292. That isn't necessarily the worst numbers in the world, but Devin Levi, yikes. I think we should just send you to the AHL and allowed you to get a bunch of minutes down there because this ain't it. So when it comes to making trades, it's actually very difficult because as I said, I'm not rushing the process here and all these young players, I don't want to trade away yet. So when it comes to assets that I actually can trade away, there's not too many. Even guys like Jack Quinn, Paterka, I want to make sure I hold on to them. However, Peyton Krebs and a third round pick for Jack Roslevic, that's not necessarily the end of the world. We could play Jack Roslevic on the bottom six here. He could develop into a decent player for us there. I mean, he's not really going to develop anymore. He's already an 83 overall, but if we can sign him to a reasonable contract to play the bottom six, I think it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to offer this contract over. Columbus is immediately saying yes. I think this deal is going to work out for us. Okay, so I don't think this Jack Roslevic deal is going to work out for us because bro wants 4.8 million to play on the bottom six. That's not going to be happening. I just gotta keep it a thousand. When we get to the re-sign phase, we might bring them back and then do a sign and trade, but I'm not doing 4.8 for the bottom six. That's absolutely ridiculous for what you provide. So it should be no surprise when the season came to an end here, the Buffalo Sabres are not gonna be making the playoffs. What a shocker that is. Ideally, we finished dead last year, but unfortunately that's not the case. 29th in the entire league with a 35, 40, and seven record. You know what? If we can get secure a top five pick here, I'm not gonna complain. Then again, the odds of us getting a top five pick are very low, but you know what we vibe. Tage Thompson, 99.5. Points. can't complain there jeff skinner 88 alex tuck 64 dylan cousins 55 nah we got to fix this team up because we should be performing way better than this also jack roslevic what'd you do since joined the team nine points in 18 games if we can bring you back for three million dollars i wouldn't be against it meanwhile the goaltending numbers atrocious here yuko pekka lukanen 28 wins five shots in 909 to 297 then again i guess these aren't necessarily the worst in the world considering what our team was but devin levi 
Nah, this ain't it. Also, what kind of world are we living in when the Washington Capitals win the Stanley Cup in five games over the Vancouver Canucks? The Washington Capitals just won the Stanley Cup, like the current Washington Capitals right now. That's just not gonna happen. But hopefully the draft lottery can stay unrealistic as well and we can jump to the number one overall pick. Never mind, we're dropping from eight to nine. That's just great. So I guess the Buffalo Sabres refuse to do any scouting here because we have absolutely no clue what these top guys are gonna be. Luckily, I know Teague Ginla has medium elite potential. I'm pretty sure Parsa also has medium elite potential but let's go with Teague Genla why not he's got medium elite potential for a fact he's a 70 overall he could be a very special player for us basically outside of the first round this draft has been incredibly mid so we're going to be trading the 168th overall as well as the 200th over to the Washington Capitals and we're going to secure a future third round pick Basically, there's no point wasting a 6th and 7th rounder when I know for a fact I'm going to get a 7th D potential player or somebody with AHL potential. Alright, so somehow Jack Roslovic improved to an 85 overall and now he wants $6 million. That's not happening. What can we do on a 1-year deal? I'll do 1 year $6 million and then trade you away at 50% retained but I'm not doing anything longer than one year. So I gave out a couple of extensions. None of them were really notable except for the Jack Roslovic one. So the rest of these guys here, I'm going to be letting walk. A lot of these guys are RFAs. They don't have any trade value whatsoever or they have AHL potential. So there's no point bringing them back. Well, these guys up here, I'm not bringing back Eric Johnson, who's 36 years old. That literally makes no sense. Now that we've got through the re-sign phase, it's time to go with some extensions. We'll start with JJ Paterka, 22 years old. He's an 84 overall. I'm fine with 3.7 for the next five. And then with a guy like Jack Quinn, six years at 2.4 million, I'm definitely not going to complain about that contract. Now, when it comes to Devin Levi's extension, we're going to wait a little bit here because he's still an 80 overall and he wants $3 million. Unless you show any signs of development, this deal is probably not going to be happening. So I'm looking at a pretty big deal here with the Nashville Predators. It's going to be Jack Roslevic. I'm not retaining any money on his contract a fourth rounder and a prospect over to the Nashville Predators we're picking up Tomasino Lazon and Luke Evangelista three good young players I mean Lazon's not necessarily the youngest in the world he is 27 years old but Tomasino and Evangelista they're two good young players that can fit on the bottom six here I think those two guys would help our team a lot so I'm going to offer this contract over they're saying no but I don't necessarily think we're that far away from getting this done and since we're picking up young players I'm actually perfectly fine with trading prospects away so I'll add another one into this deal and I think that should be enough there we go we got this deal done with Nashville and I think the Buffalo Sabres just got some massive upgrades and I have absolutely no issue with this Tomasino extension right here we're going to be doing 2.8 for the next eight seasons he's going to be playing on the bottom six you never know he might develop into a top six player for us and with that contract I can't complain with this deal and then with Luke Evangelista we're also going to be doing an eight-year extension here these are some high risk high reward moves but I mean two million per year for the next eight seasons and he can develop for us that's a great deal so I think we are going to make one free agent signing here and it's going to be with Forsling we're going to give him a bit more than what he's asking for we'll do 5.35 for the next six seasons he's a good offensive defenseman he can fit on the second line I think he's going to be a massive upgrade for our team okay I gotta take a risk on a deal like this Capo Caco three years at 2.4 million he didn't get qualified as an RFA so he is a UFA right now I gotta take the risk if he develops into a great player then we can keep him on the team and if he doesn't who really cares it's not that big of a contract so heading into year number two the Buffalo Sabres are clearly a better team Tage Thompson 92 over overall Dylan Cousins in 88 and Alex Tuck in 87. The second line is going to see Skinner, Middlestat, and Benson while the bottom six saw a massive upgrade with the lowest overall being an 80 and that's Jordan Greenway. For the future though we are going to have to make some difficult decisions here because on the second line we have Casey Middlestat who's a playmaker, Zach Benson who's also a playmaker, and Jeff Skinner. I can't see him being here for the long run so he'll be traded soon. So the second line is definitely going to be changing over the next couple of years. Defensively, we're actually looking incredible here. Rasmus Dolin and Owen Power are getting a plus five boost, while on the second line, Lazant and Forsling are getting a plus three. I didn't think these guys would fit so well together, but here we are. Meanwhile, in between the pipes, I think it's a good thing that I didn't bet against Devin Levi because he's up to an 84 overall. I'm really excited to see what he can do this season, and I'm really hoping that this Buffalo Sabres team can go on a bit of a run and make the playoffs. And honestly, this season is going to have a massive impact on the moves we make. I think Casey Milstad's probably going to be traded because Zach Benson's going to be our second line center, and Milstad doesn't really fit on any of the other other lines so barring what happens here that's going to spark a few changes so i honestly might have sparked one of the fastest rebuilds in nhl history fourth in the entire league at the trade deadline 39 20 and 3 we're looking absolutely fantastic scoring a lot of goals but the defense definitely needs to be better no nah, but seriously tage thompson 43 goals in 62 games jeff skinner's got 40 alex tuck's looking fantastic 61 points casey millstad he's got 59 points i was contemplating trading this man i guess that's not going to be happening meanwhile when it comes to the goaltending numbers devin levi 29 wins here three shots and 899 
and a 326. Still not the greatest numbers in the world, but you are up to an 84 overall. So we're going to trust the process here. We're not rushing anything. So I think the smart thing to do here is to actually not make any moves and just rock with the team we have right now. There really is no point making any stupid decisions here, trying to rush the process. Devin Levi is only an 84 overall. I'm not sure we can win a Stanley Cup with an 84 overall in between the pipes, but next season when he's up to an 86, 87, we might be able to do some true damage. So let's make sure we bring back the entire team next season, and then we'll be looking to create a dynasty. So with year number two wrapping up here, I definitely can't complain with what the Buffalo Sabres did. Third in the entire league, 51 wins, 26 losses, 5 OT losses. Being a 51 win team in year number two, that's a great sign for what's to come. Averaging 3.65 goals per game, but 3.21 allowed. We definitely need to fix that defense. But we already knew that, let's be honest. Okay, I don't think we're actually as good as we were because Tage Thompson, 104 points, you had 53 goals. Jeff Skinner had 58 on the second line. So I think our team's actually performing better than what we really are. Let's just be completely honest here 99 points from Jeff Skinner 81 from Milstadt 76 from Alex Tuck I think we overperformed this season if I'm being completely honest because respectfully looking at Devin Levi's numbers 38 wins and five shouts is great but a 900 save percentage and a 319 goals against we definitely shouldn't be winning 51 games with those numbers but hey we won a lot of games this season and we made the playoffs so why complain we got the New York Rangers in the first round we already know what this New York team's comprised of it's gonna be a tough matchup no matter what so to the first two games I thought the Buffalo Sabres actually might be able to compete for a stand the cup but then we drop the next two so game five is going to be a massive one hopefully we don't lose three straight we're not going to be we're going to be winning that one seven to three so i think we're going to be closing this one out in game six a four three victory maybe buffalo can't compete for a stanley cup so we moved on to the second round and now we have the boston bruins to take on but i'm still looking at those washington capitals they're the best team in the entire league but they just got taken to seven games by a wild card team so maybe washington's a bit washed right now if we can make it to the conference finals we actually might be able to take them down and make the stanley cup final but i'm getting ahead of myself we still have Boston to take on. Similar to our matchup against the New York Rangers, this one's going to be going back and forth the entire way. Currently, the series is tied 2-2, so Game 5 is going to be a massive one. We're going to be dropping that one 3-2, so we better bounce back here in Game number 6. Unfortunately, that's not going to be happening, and we're going to be following in the second round here. But you know what? I'll take a second round exit, considering this team was 8th last in the entire league last season. We saw some great development from this team, and once we improve the defense a bit more, I think we might be unstoppable. Maybe even a 65-win team. Now, at this point, I just feel bad for Vancouver Canucks fans. They've made to back-to-back -to -back Stanley Cups now and they've lost both times. This one to the Boston Bruins once again. This team can't catch a break. So Jeff Skinner really had 17 points in the playoffs including 10 goals and was still minus one. Bro had 17 points in 12 games including 12 goals minus one. Yeah that's just not right. Also the goaltending numbers I'm assuming they weren't that great. Devin Levi five wins with an 893 and a 339. Now Devin Levi I'm gonna keep it a thousand with you. I said I wasn't gonna rush the process with this Buffalo Sabres team but if your numbers aren't good during the regular season next season and you don't perform in the postseason i'm trading for a goaltender plain and simple now we don't have a lot of cap space to work with but we do have to bring back devin levi so i can do 3.5 for the next two seasons you know what we'll do 3.4 i want to save that extra 100k okay normally i wouldn't show the draft lottery results but i do want to point out toronto finished seventh last in the entire league their pick jumped from seven to one and it went to the chicago blackhawks now that is tough. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all right now we're making some trades because I'm not gonna use a first round pick on someone that I'm not even sure is gonna be a medium top four potential defenseman. Just kidding, we're gonna use that right now. Let's see what this turns into. Top 60 potential, definitely should have traded that first round pick. That was incredibly stupid. Okay, I just gotta point out the fact that these scouts have not been cooking in the slightest. Okay, I take that back. Do we go with the high elite potential goaltender that has a gem or do I go with the low elite potential player? You know what? We're going to secure this guy right here. And we're going to trade for a second round pick. We just got a low elite potential defenseman. Now I'm going to trade for probably the 29th overall pick in the second round here. The 62nd overall. I think that's the move. So I'll do Connor Clifton for the 62nd overall pick. Because by doing this, we also cleared up his contract. Because he's not even playing for us right now. So that deal right there is actually incredible for us. And then with the 62nd overall pick, we're going to draft this goaltender right here. Who's a gem. Hopefully he has high elite potential high starter wow that was an absolute waste of time so after that massive disappointment i'm just trading picks away in order to get future picks so fourth and a seven for a third rounder from the anaheim ducks already secured a third rounder from the la kings now we're going to trade a fifth and a sixth and hopefully get another third round pick i don't think we'll be able to never mind we're going to pick one up from the boston bruins so we trade the rest of the picks we had in the draft and acquired a third from anaheim a third from the kings and a third from boston so during the reassign phase we are going to give up one extension it's going to go to yuko pekka lukanen we'll do 
through two years at 1.5 million. He holds it down as a backup, so I'm not going to complain about what he's been bringing to the team. So after making that loan signing during the re-sign phase, we're going to bring back Alex Tuck here. We're going to do three years at $8 million. He's a pretty important piece to the team. He's getting himself quite the payday, but we got to make sure we bring this man back. So really, I think bringing back Alex Tuck is going to be the only major move we do because we're bringing back the entire team. We're all going to be better because it's an incredibly young team and everyone's going to continue to progress. I think we might be a 60 win team and I have a feeling we're going to be hoisting a Stanley Cup this season. So we're entering year number three here and the team's looking even better. Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, Alex Tuck, they're going to be holding down that first line. And then we got Jeff Skinner and Casey Milstein and Zach Benson on the second. The bottom six continues to look fantastic like usual, but I think we might make a couple changes next season. Because Matt Savoy, he doesn't really have a good line fit here. I don't think he's ever going to be a top six player for us. So I think we should trade him while his value's at its highest. Meanwhile, with the defense, it's going to be looking the exact same here, except Forsling's up to an 87 overall. I wouldn't be surprised if he develops a couple X factors in the next couple seasons. Meanwhile, Devin Levi, he's still our man here. He's up to an 86 overall, still has that medium leap potential. We got to win a Stanley Cup this season. That's a fact. Okay, I just want to keep it a thousand. I never said at any point this would be a realistic video. Jeff Skinner, this man's not scoring goals this season. So last season was definitely a fluke. I mean, he has 13 goals here in 36 games. That's definitely not enough. He's up to a 90 overall and packaging him up along with a second round pick might be able to get us Cole Caulfield. Yeah, you heard that right. 90 overall Cole Caulfield, 25 year old Cole Caulfield. If we could somehow pull this deal off, that would be massive for us. They're going to be saying no, but we just need to sweeten the deal. All I have to do is throw a seventh rounder in this deal and we're going to be getting Cole Caulfield and we're trading away Jeff Skinner. We're freeing up money in this deal. That is massive for us. And I think the next move we're going to be making is Middlestat over to the Seattle Kraken along with two third rounders and we're going to be picking up Shane Wright. Shane Wright, he's already up to an 88 overall at 21 years old. He's going to develop into an absolute beast. And if he can develop into an absolute beast on our team, that would be perfect for us. We also have to realize we have Zach Benson also on the second line, so we don't really need two playmakers. So I think this is going to be a good deal if we're able to get it done. They're acting like we're not close whatsoever, but if I add another third rounder, is that going to be enough to get this deal done? They're still saying no. I'll do Casey and Milstadt and four third round picks. I think that's more than enough for Shane Wright. I'm going to offer that over. They're still saying no. But you know what? We got a lot of draft picks to work with. We can make this happen. So how about I do two third round picks and a second rounder? Is that going to be enough? They're still saying no. I'll do a second rounder and three third round picks. Hopefully that's enough for Shane Wright and we can get this deal done. They're still saying no. I didn't want to bust out the first round pick, but if we have to do it, I will. I think after we make this trade, we'll be able to turn the team around. So this first round pick really won't have that much trade value. So do I do Casey Milstadt in a first round pick for Shane Wright? That might be the move. I mean, to be fair, if I'm giving you our first round pick, you got to give me your first round pick. So we'll see if they accept this. They're going to be saying no. How about your first round pick for next season? I mean, that actually has a lot of trade value. How about I give you a first round pick and you give me two second rounders? There should be a world in which we get this deal done. I'll give you a couple third round picks in order to get your seconds. I think this is a fair deal right here. They're going to be saying no. You know what? We'll take out one second round pick. Maybe this should be enough. They're saying no. Let's start throwing the third rounders into the deal. We'll do Buffaloes and we'll do Anaheim. This should be enough for Shane Wright in a second round pick. I'll offer that over. We got the deal done. Now we just have to bank on our team turning it around. So I think we're going to rock this for the rest of the seasons. Dylan Cousins, Tage Thompson, Alex Tuck, Cole Caulfield, Zach Benson, and Shane Wright. And I do want to mention I'm incredibly mad because when I did the scouting on Shane Wright, he fit on every single forward line. He does not fit on the second line whatsoever. But you know what? We're still going to rock with him here. He's an 88 overall. We're going to ignore the line fit. We're just going to make it work. So it's an absolute dumpster fire with the Buffalo Sabres right now. Now, and I couldn't tell you why. We're 21st in the entire league here. Never mind, we're actually 22nd with a 30, 27, and 3 record. Our offense isn't good and our defense isn't good. Like, we're not good at anything right now. And where does that problem start? Well, Tage Thompson has 66 points and only 27 goals. Dylan Cousins, 22 goals. And Cole Caulfield, how many goals have you scored since coming over? 9 in 24 games and you only have 15 points. We got to make some massive changes to this team during the offseason. And honestly, Shane Wright, the biggest disappointment to you right now, 11 points in 24 games. I'm going to have to trade you away. I was expecting you to be a lot better with this team. Zach Benson, you're not really picking up many points. I was expecting more from you. This entire team right now is just a massive disappointment. And the goaltending, that's even worse. Devin Levi, a 900 save percentage and a 318. I don't know what we have to do to fix this team up, but we definitely have to make some changes. But the changes aren't going to start right now. They're going to start in the offseason. But I guess they could start right now now because we do have to turn it around because we don't own our first round pick and I don't want that pick to end up being the first overall so if we can make some moves here we will but if we can't then that's not the end of the world so it's actually pretty ironic the trades I'm making because at the beginning of the video I said I wasn't going to rush the process and you know what we're doing right now rushing the process
process because I've made some very bad moves. It's going to be Rose and Shane Wright in a third round pick over to the Dallas Stars, and we're going to be picking up Rupe Hints. Now, all we have to do is pray that Rupe Hints can fit on our top six somewhere. And then our next trade is going to be a risky one. It's going to be Jack Quinn for Connor Zary. And then I'm going to hopefully bring back Zary on a cheaper contract than Jack Quinn. They're going to be saying no to this deal, but all we have to do is throw in a seventh rounder. I don't know what I'm even doing at this point. I've been making some very questionable deals, but you know what? I think it's going to work out for this team in the long run. But who really knows? Because I have not been cooking this season. All right, so here's the plan heading into the offseason because obviously we didn't make the playoffs. We were actually a massive disappointment. But that's no surprise. 19th in the entire league. Never mind, it's the St. Louis Blues. We were 20th in the entire league with a 40 38 and 4 record offense wasn't good defense wasn't good we had a differential of zero we were scoring as many goals as we were allowing so obviously you're not going to be winning a stanley cup if you're doing that but this is what the plan is going to be we're going to make an insane top six it's going to be like tage thompson dylan cousins cole caulfield rupe hints and then the rest of the core is going to be strictly focused on defense we're going to allow these guys to score 17 goals a game they're going to be lighting the lamp like crazy while the rest of the team they just have to play defense when it comes to the defense rasmus delin forsling owen power they're going to be the core the rest of these guys we're bringing in defensive defensemen and to finish off the plan i think we got to bring in a new goaltender because devin levi he's not the guy 31 wins three shots a 902 and a 314 yeah it's just not it with all that being said though we might as well see who won the stanley cup it looks like it's gonna be the vegas gold knights taking down the new jersey devils in seven games we're gonna be here next season i can guarantee we're making the playoffs and there's like a 50 50 chance that we compete for a stanley cup and when i say compete i don't mean like are one of the best teams in the entire league no when i say compete i mean conference finals minimum all right so in case you're wondering what our first round pick turned into it ended up being the 13th overall that's going to seattle i gotta really stop making stupid moves i was talking about how i wasn't going to rush the process we were going to take this year by year and what did i do in year number two i got excited by how well this team was doing and then i started making a bunch of stupid moves but you know what we're about to turn those stupid moves into something well that's the plan at least i don't know if that's going to happen but we're going to hope for it all right similar to the past couple drafts it's been absolutely abysmal so we're going to be trading a fourth and sixth rounder over to the carolina hurricanes to pick up a future third and then with this fifth rounder right here, we're going to try to pick up a future fifth. There we go. We got this deal done. We got ourselves a couple more draft picks for next season, and we're going to need them because we're going to make some big moves. Okay, so any player that I believe has any trade value whatsoever is going to be joined the team. Except for Lazan, I actually want to bring him back so I can play him. So we're going to do four years at 1.7 million. That's actually a great deal for him. He's playing some good second line minutes, and he gives Forsling a plus three overall boost, so I'm not going to complain about that. We're also going to be bringing in Tiga Ginla because obviously we want him on the team. No reason we wouldn't sign him. Another guy we're going to be giving a nice contract here is going to be Connor Zary. We're going to do three years at 1.8 million. He plays good fourth line minutes, so I want to keep him around. So before we do anything, obviously we got to bring Zach Benson back and we'll do 7.4 million for the next six seasons. That's going to keep him around for the rest of the rebuild. I don't really know how much Capo Caco is going to want. He's probably going to want a big deal. $5 million. That's not necessarily the end of the world if we can free up the money for him. So now that we've offered Zach Benson that contract and I can guarantee he's going to accept it. Now it's time to start making the big time moves. So this is the backup plan right here. Matt Savoy, a third and fourth rounder over to the Florida Panthers. We're picking up Spencer Knight. He's a 90 overall at 25 years old. He's got decent poison 85 so he can definitely be our stanley cup winning goaltender i'm going to offer this package over they're saying yes immediately now we have our goaltender for the future before we sign spencer knight though we are going to have to clear up a bit of cap space here that's why i'm going to be sending alex tuck over to the detroit red wings we're picking up joe valeno a third and fourth rounder and joe he's going to be playing some big second line minutes for us not only is he an 86 overall with an x factor but he also has a perfect fit on the second line that's exactly what we need him for so joe welcome to the team unfortunately we're not getting the draft picks maybe we can get a third round I guess we're just gonna be doing Alex Tuck for Joe Valeno straight up one for one personally I can live with that and then with Spencer Knight we have 8.1 million dollars to work with so I'm offering you 8.1 million for the next seven seasons I think that should be enough to get this deal done and even if it isn't that's actually perfectly fine because I'll just trade Devin Levi away probably should have done that beforehand to make sure that Spencer Knight comes to the team but you know what it is what it is all right so as we know we're walking away from Devin Levi here so I'm going to send him over to the Florida Panthers and pick up a second and third round pick we're also going to be trading Samuelson here because I don't want to really be paying him for 4.2 million for the role he plays it just doesn't make sense for us we can find a replacement for like 2 million we also have to clear up money for next season that's the other reason so we have a fair amount of money to work with so we might as well make a couple big signings here i mean they're not really big signings but we got to fill out the defense here we'll do shillington to a one-year deal at 3.6 million and that still gives us 10 million dollars to work with i just about made a 
very, very big mistake. We have $13 million to work with, but Spencer Knight's not under contract yet, so we still have to sign him. I was about to give Sidney Crosby $10 million to join the team. Thankfully, I didn't do that. So I offered Spencer Knight originally $8.1 million, and he said no to the contract. We're now going to be signing him for $7.5 for the next seven. Bro fumbled the bag, plain and simple. Okay, maybe he didn't fumble the bag. Like, bro, I'm giving you almost exactly what you want. I gave you $400k less. What do you want now? Now we want $7.8 million. I'll give it to you. I'm really not going to argue over 300k. Okay, at this point, I actually don't even know what to do. Joe Valeno doesn't fit on the second line. Apparently, nobody fits on the second line. The scouting report said he fits on the second line. He clearly does not fit on the second line. It's the same coach, so we can't screw it up that way. Bro, what is going on with this game? Why can I not find somebody that can fit on the second line? So you know what? We're trading him because he can't play on the second line whatsoever, so we got to pick up a new center. All right, so at this point, who really knows who's going to fit on the second line here? So it doesn't matter who we trade for. We're going to make a risk with Matty Beniers. Maybe he'll fit on the second line. Who knows? So I really don't care what it takes. Joe Leno, he's just two third rounders for many years. Bring him onto the team. No messing around here. All right, you're going to be saying no. Here's a second round pick. Now I'll take one of these third rounders out. For Leno, a second and a third for many years. That should be enough. They're going to be saying no. You know what? I'll just give you a third rounder because I want to get this deal done with. A second, two thirds, and a player for many years. This should be more than enough. Honestly, they're just kind of bugging right now, but I really want to get this deal done. So I'm giving up way too much in this deal. But you know what? I don't even care anymore. Give me Matty Beniers. And now we just have to pray he fits on the second line. All right, it's time to make another trade. Matty Beniers also doesn't fit on the second line. At this point, I'm actually starting to get a little annoyed. I'm not going to lie. Because no matter who I trade for, even if the scouting says, oh, they fit on the second line, they don't fit on the second line. So I don't even know what it's going to take anymore. All right, so we're moving on from Matty Beniers that quick. And now I'm sending him over to the LA Kings. And we're going to try to pick up Quinton Byfield. That was a pretty easy deal to get done. Matty Beniers in a second and a third. All right, so this is what we're rocking with. Dylan Cousins, Rupe Hintz, Tage Thompson, Cole Caulfield, Quinton Byfield, Zach Benson. Quinton Byfield doesn't have the greatest fit on the second line, but it's the best we've seen in a long time. So we're going to work with it. This top six can go down as one of the greatest of all time if they play up to their potential. The bottom six, you know what? We got some great pieces here. We're going to ignore the fact that Coolidge basically has zero fit here. We're just going to rock with this team right here. We'll see what happens. When it comes to the defense, we have Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power, Forsling, and the rest of the guys here you got great fits. So we're getting a plus one boost on third, a plus three on the second, and a plus five on the first. And in between the pipes, we already know who we're rocking. Spencer Knight, a 90 overall goaltender. We're winning 60 games. This team should easily be able to score, and they should be able to keep the puck out of the net. There's no reason for anything other than success. So the Buffalo Sabres currently are one of the best teams in the entire league, but we're still not looking too bad. We're sitting in a wild card spot, although we're eighth in the entire league with a 36-19-6 record. The offense right now, absolutely flying, while the defense, pretty good. 2.8 goals allowed per game. We actually might win a Stanley Cup here if we can keep it going. Now the top six on this team is looking fantastic. Tage Thompson, 64 points. Zach Benson, 57. Rupe Hintz, 57. Darlene's got 56. Nah, this team's rolling right now. And to cap it all off, we have one of the best goaltenders in the entire game on our team spencer knight 26 wins two shouts a 913 to 280 with numbers like these i think we actually have a shot at winning a stanley cup so i've been trying to make a deal for the last couple minutes here but i can't really find anything that's actually going to help our team like i don't want to touch the top six whatsoever that's looking fantastic and for the bottom six i can't really find anything our defense is great our goaltending's fantastic so i think we just gotta rock with the team we have right now so the Buffalo Sabres would go on an absolute tear to finish out the season here, finishing with a 51-23-8 record. Not only were we one of the best offensive teams in the entire league, but our defense was also fantastic. 2.73 allowed. That's a great improvement from last season. But headlining the team, of course, we got to talk about Tage Thompson, 61 goals. This man was absolutely locked in. Rupe Hintz, 88 points. Dylan Cousins, 79. Zach Benson, 78. And he continues to get better. While in between the pipes, Spencer Knight, he was that guy. 38 wins, 3 shots, a 914 to 270. I feel like this team has a real shot at winning a Stanley Cup. But Yuko Pekka Lukanen, shout to him as well. 13 1 and 2 record with a 919 to 243. Nah, best backup goaltender in the league by far. But we can't get ahead of ourselves here because in the first round, we are taking on a 50-win team in the Boston Bruins. So this could really go either way. Although we were third in the entire league, Boston was top five. So we can't sleep on them. And just like everybody expected, we're going to be losing here in five games. I'm not surprised in the least. Okay, I guess we're going to be losing in six games. Or maybe we can actually spark a comeback here. Can we make a 3-1 series comeback? We're off to game seven. No, like real talk, I was fully expecting this team to get swept in the first round. I feel like that would be the most fitting way to end this season. But we're going to simulate game nine 
number seven here and we're dominating picking up four goals and we're off to the second round completing the 3-1 series comeback we actually might be able to do some damage here in the postseason we've gone through some adversity now it's time to lock in and win the next 12 but if we're going to win the next 12 we can't be messing around like we did with the boston bruins we have the tampa bay lightning up next they're a 51 win team if we really want to win a stanley cup we have to play like the best we slip up for even one second and we're toast so let's see if the Buffalo Sabres can keep that momentum going. We won three straight games to finish out the series, and it looks like we're about to win four straight. We've won seven straight now. We swept the 51 win Tampa Bay Lightning. We made a 3-1 series comeback against the Boston Bruins. This is our Stanley Cup to lose. So not only did the 51 win Tampa Bay Lightning fall in the second round to us, but the San Jose Sharks gonna be falling to the Vancouver Canucks. So it's Vancouver versus St. Louis. It's the Buffalo Sabres taking on the New York Rangers. The Rangers are a 49 win team. We're taking on some of the best in the entire league. But if you wanna be the best, you have to beat the best. Or you could just get incredibly lucky and the wildcard teams go on deep runs. And then we would just face a wildcard team in the conference finals and then another wildcard team in the Stanley Cup final. However, I don't think that's gonna be happening here. The New York Rangers, they're currently putting up a pretty good fight against us. The series is split two games apiece. Game five is going to be a massive one. Unfortunately, we're dropping that one. We need to win game six. Game six is a must win for us, and we're going to be dropping that one four to three. The Rangers are off to the Stanley Cup final to take on the Blues. We were two games away from the Stanley Cup final, and we blew it. An absolute shame. Well, I guess there is one lone positive we can celebrate here. The St. Louis Blues are winning the Stanley Cup over the New York Rangers. So if the Buffalo Sabres aren't winning, I'm happy it's St. Louis. But even still, we should have won the Stanley Cup. I'm sorry, what? The St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup after finishing 21st in the entire league. This team was scoring 3.21 goals per game, but allowing 2.17. In what world are they going on a Stanley Cup run? Like respectfully, 39, 39, and 4. This team wasn't good. Like, it's not even like they made the playoffs finishing 16th in the entire league. The Montreal Canadiens, they missed the playoffs finishing 17th. The Florida Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes, they missed the postseason finishing 13th, 14th, and even the Toronto Maple Leafs, 15th in the entire league, missed the postseason. The St. Louis Blues, 21st in the entire league, and they won the Stanley Cup. So here's our postseason numbers. Our first line obviously carried the way. I mean, our top six carried the way. They were looking absolutely fantastic. Tage Thompson, you're an absolute fraud. 10 points in 17 games. If you played a bit better, we would have won a Stanley Cup. Now I just need to see who's on the St. Louis team. Obviously, Robert Thomas is here. Michael Bunting led the way. You're actually kidding me. Michael Bunting led the way for St. Louis. No, nah, this is actually a joke. Who's in between the pipes? I need to know that. Benner. That's not much of a surprise. 16, 3, and 3. One shot, a 929 to 219. When this man locks in, there's not too many goaltenders better than him. But seriously, Michael Bunting led the way in scoring for this team. No disrespect to Michael Bunting, but obviously in a situation like this, Robert Thomas should be picking up about 40 points. No, nah, that's just wild. So after that disappointing loss in the conference finals, let's get right into the draft here. And we're going to be getting a fantastic prospect early on. We're securing a low lead potential sniper. And it looks like the great selections are continuing because of the 139th overall, we're going to be securing a medium lead potential goaltender. So I think it's about time we start giving out some extensions here. We're going to start with Capo Caco. Honestly, I didn't think we were going to have the money to bring him back, but I guess we do. We'll do 4.4 for the next two seasons. And 85 overall, he has a fantastic fit on the third line, and I'm happy with keeping him here. All right, so Capo Caco is actually saying no to that contract. So we're going to try 4.6 for the next two seasons. Hopefully he accepts this deal. And just like that, Caco is going to be returning to the team. So we actually only have to make one move before heading into next season, and that's going to be Coolidge in his fifth round pick over to the Anaheim Ducks. So we're going to be picking up Zellweger. He's going to play some big minutes for us. And the best part about Zellweger is even after this season, if I don't have the money to bring him back, he's an RFA. We'll just qualify him and then trade him for another defenseman. Okay, real talk. We should be winning a Stanley Cup. Dylan Cousins, superstar X Factor. Rupe Hintz, superstar X Factor. Tage Thompson, a superstar X Factor. Cole Caulfield, superstar X Factor. Quinton Byfield, superstar X Factor. Five players that have superstar X Factors. And that's just the forward core. Because of course, we still have Rasmus Dahlin. He's got one himself. That makes six players on this team. You never know. Owen Power, he might develop one over the next couple seasons. And then we have Spencer Knight in between the pipes. Although he doesn't have that superstar X factor, he is a 91 overall. He's got five normal X factors. This team's winning 60 games. There is no one stopping this offense. Nobody's going to be able to stop this top six. And on top of that, look at the bottom six we have here. Absolutely incredible. Nobody's going to be able to stop this team. I refuse to believe that anyone is stopping this. 
Then again, I'm also gassing this team up so much, I would not be surprised if we either get swept in the first round or don't even make the playoffs. But you know what? We're not going to talk negative like that. We know this team's going to dominate. We know what they're comprised of. And now we're going to go win a Stanley Cup. So we're going to simulate up to the trade deadline here. Maybe make a move. I'm not too sure if we will because we really don't have too much cap space to work with. But hey, we can make something work here. Let's go get ourselves a Stanley Cup. Right now, things are looking pretty good for the Buffalo Sabres. Second in the entire league with a 40, 19, and 5 record at the trade deadline. We're scoring 3.5 five nine goals per game but the defense is the elite thing here 2.75 one of the best in the entire league if not the best i think it's second in the entire league it's actually third but you know what i can live with that and you know what else I can live with? This top six scoring. Thompson, Caulfield, Rupe Hints, Dylan Cousins, Zach Benson, Quinton Byfield, absolutely elite. And you know what else is elite? Of course, the goaltending on this team. Spencer Knight, 32 wins, three shouts, a 917 to 258. These numbers are even better than last season, so I'm expecting better results in the postseason. So we're probably not going to be making a move here because we just don't have the cap space. But I do want to point out Alexander Ovechkin is on the trade block. And at 41 years old, sorry, 42 years old, this man's getting paid $10.6 million. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Also, Claude Giroux at 40 years old, he's getting paid 9.1. That makes so much sense. Nah, but enough yap and we're not going to make any trades here. Let's simulate to the end of the season and see how this team cooks. So I think that making no trades was definitely the right decision because we're going to finish first in the entire league with a 50, 20, and 7 record. In the final 20 games, I think we went 15 and 5. So yeah, this team's one of the best in the entire league. 3.7 goals, 4 per game, while only allowing 2.62. It's our year to win. Now, while we look at these stats right here, I just want to point out, this entire team is coming back next season, except for Zellweger. So this entire core right here, everyone's coming back. Again, is going to be even better. If we don't win a Stanley Cup this season, then we'll just win one next season, plain and simple. And the goaltending number is phenomenal from Spencer Knight. 45 wins, 6 shots, a 921 to 247. Okay, no cap. We can't screw this one up. A 921 to 247? These numbers are incredible. Like, fantastic numbers for the simulation. If we somehow fold in the playoffs especially the first round then i don't know what i'm gonna do actually i know exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna run it back with the exact same team is if it ain't broke don't fix it but in saying that if we lose in the first round doesn't that mean our team is broken and we should fix it i'm starting to overthink this a bit too much we had the montreal canadians in the first round let's warm up against them i already know since i said we're gonna warm up against the montreal canadians this team's gonna sweep us so let's just get it over real quick okay never mind the buffalo sabers actually aren't frauds and we're gonna do the sweeping here and we're off to the second round just like that i'll take it so after absolutely smoking those Montreal Canadiens in the first round we moved on to an easier second round matchup the Toronto Maple Leafs and I'm sorry but we're not losing to these frauds and as I said we're not losing to these frauds in the Toronto Maple Leafs so we're gonna be taking them down in five games here we allowed them to win one I didn't want it to be a complete sweep here so here we are back in the conference finals for the second year in a row this time we're gonna be taking on the New Jersey Devils the Devils have come off back-to-back -back sweeps here they're 8-0 in the postseason but we're 8-1 we've gone through a bit of adversity through losing one game so I know the Devils aren't gonna be able to stop us also can we talk about how the Vancouver Canucks are in another conference finals if this team makes the Stanley Cup final then it's gonna be a breeze for us to win because all they do in the Stanley Cup final is lose. So the Devils are actually putting up a bit of a fight here because so far we split the series and game five is going to be a massive one. We can't afford to lose that one and luckily we're not. So we're going to be closing this series out in game six and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. The Seattle Kraken and Vancouver Canucks, they're about to head to game seven here. So we haven't figured out who we're taking on next. So our Stanley Cup final is set. The Seattle Kraken taking on the Buffalo Sabres. Two great teams going head to head here, but I just don't think anyone can stop our offense. So here we go. The first four games of the series series ideally we make this a quick sweep and then just head out here but it doesn't look like it'll be a sweep but you know what we're up three to one in the series so we're going to close this out in five games a nice win from the buffalo sabers and we're stanley cup champs just like that and headlining our incredible run right here that's going to be dylan cousins and tage thompson both of these guys are picking up 10 goals and 15 assists for 25 points and the reason we win a stanley cup here is because tage thompson stepped up last postseason he wasn't looking that great what do you have 10 points or something he was not that man 10 points in 17 games games but he was him this time around 25 points in 20 games we're definitely not doing it without this man but you know who else we're not doing it without spencer knight 16 3-1 record one shot a 921 to 253 
we're bringing the entire team back next season we're gonna run it back here and i can guarantee we're going back to back so things are looking great for the buffalo sabers not only did we just win a stanley cup but in the draft with 128th overall pick we're gonna be securing a mediumly potential goaltender so when it comes to the re-sign phase obviously there's no really big players we have to bring back here but i did qualify zellweger because we're gonna have to trade him away because mans wants about 5.1 million dollars we have 3.6 to work with so we're gonna trade him away bring in another young defenseman that can play for us for one season and we're just gonna keep flipping defenseman for the rest of this video so we've got through the re-sign phase but now we have a handful of really important pieces to bring back but of course we gotta start with quentin byfield one of the best players on our team and with quentin byfield i honestly was expecting that he would be asking for a bit more money but i think we can do an eight million dollar contract for the next six seasons that's going to be a great deal for us and that's going to leave us with seven million to work with now with that seven million dollars technically we could bring back capo caco but i don't want to spend seven million dollars on a third line guy so we're going to let him walk after this season however there's one third line guy we definitely don't want to leave the team that's going to be Tiga Ginla so we're going to do 2.3 million for the next five seasons that will keep him around for the rest of the rebuild now we technically could bring back Henry Yoki Haru but at four million dollars I don't think that's worth it for an 81 overall that just seems a bit wild if you ask me Connor Zeri on the other hand five years at 1.1 I'm not even going to hesitate with that deal all right so this was the plan all along Zellweger thank you for helping us win a Stanley Cup but now I'm going to send you over to the Montreal Canadiens for a defenseman on a one-year contract right now I guess this deal is going to be enough we're not going to go one for one here but we do have some draft picks we can work with of course it probably shouldn't take too much i'll throw a sixth rounder in this deal and i think that'll be enough to make the difference so i'll offer that over and we're getting this deal done and then similar to zellweger we're not going to be bringing back this defenseman for next season bro wants 4.6 million and 82 overall that's just not happening for a third pairing guy so we already know what the drill is here we're gonna repeat dylan cousins rupe hints tage thompson cole caulfield quinton byfield zach benson the best top six you've ever seen in your life the bottom six here absolutely incredible we got 86 overall Capo Caco, 83 overall Tiga Ginla, and then 85 overall JJ Paterica. An absolutely incredible team right here. And obviously, we already know what the defense is looking like. Absolutely incredible here. A plus five boost on the first pairing, plus three on the second, plus one on the third, and then in between the pipes, we have one of the greatest goaltenders in the league right now, Spencer Knight, 91 overall. This man's already won us one Stanley Cup. Now it's time for him to win us another. Yeah, I don't know why, but for some reason in this rebuild, I decided to do things differently, and I want to get as many players with superstar X factors as humanly possible. And so far, that's working out for us. We've already won one Stanley Cup. We're heading into year number five here, and we're about to win another one. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it and right now the buffalo sabers there's nothing broken about this team so there should be no surprise that like usual the buffalo sabers are one of the best in the entire league 41 22 and 1 we have one of the best offenses in the entire league and our defense absolutely sensational 2.78 goals allowed per game i think that's best in the entire league here of course it is and with one of the best offenses this team can't be stopped just look at the elite scoring on this team. Tage Thompson, 42 goals. Dylan Cousins, 32 goals. Rupe Hens, 21. Cole Caulfield, 25. And we're only at the trade deadline here. The offense is absolutely flying with this team. And of course, we know the defense is great. So that must mean the goaltending numbers are incredible. Spencer Knight, 36 wins, four shots, a 920 and a 238. Even better numbers than last season. I didn't even think that would be possible. However, I wouldn't mind making a move to improve this team. But what move could we make that would actually improve our team? Because right now, I don't think anything can really help us. Okay, hold on. You're telling me a 43-year-old Alexander Ovechkin is getting paid $11 million right now. Wasn't he only getting paid like 10.5 last season? How did at 41 years old this man get a more expensive contract? He's getting an even bigger bag than he was last season. It makes absolutely no sense, but I respect the heck out of it. Secure the bag, my guy. So just taking a look at what's available here, I don't think there's anything that could really make our team any better unless we bring in Andre Burakovsky for one season. That could be the move. Let me just see if he has a fit on the bottom six. If he can fit on the bottom six here, I think we bring him in. So Andre Burakovsky, can you fit on the bottom six here? Unfortunately, you only fit on the second line. We don't need you for the second line, so I guess we're not going to be making any moves here. But man, if you fit on the bottom six... I would have traded three first round picks for you. All right, so there's two things we have to talk about right now. One, the Buffalo Sabres, third in the entire league, 51, 27, and four. I can't complain about that. But we had nine teams over 100 points, and the difference between ninth and first was only eight points. So yeah, there's a lot of parity in the league. 
And really, there's about 10 teams that could win the Stanley Cup. And although there was parity in the league, nobody had an offense quite like ours. Tage Thompson, 97 points. Dylan Cousins, 93. Rupe Hintz, 90. Then Caulfield's picking up 69 points. Zach Benson's got 59. Owen Power, 57. I can't complain with these numbers right here. I mean, ideally, I want to see Cole Caulfield picking up some more points. Same with Zach Benson and Quinton Byfield. But you know what? I can't complain with this production. And you know who else's production I can't complain about? Spencer Knight, 43 wins, 5 shots, a 918 and a 245. Nah, these are elite numbers. If our backup goaltender played a bit better, we probably could have been a 55 win team. But this man just sucked. An 885 and a 354? You're not that guy, pal. So we already know what's on the line for this season. We're looking at completing a repeat here and winning our second Stanley Cup of the video. We're starting off with the Boston Bruins. And let's not mess around here. Let's get a quick sweep out of the way. I was not expecting that to happen. I was just yapping to be completely honest, but we actually swept the Boston Bruins. Show it to Forsling for picking up seven points in four games, including four goals. No, that man is him. So after that sweep over the Boston Bruins, we've moved on to the second round and similar to the last postseason, we're not losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs, plain and simple. We're gonna sweep this team as well and move on to the conference finals. All right, so we've just completed back-to-back -back sweeps now and we're 8-0 in the postseason. I know we have an incredible Buffalo Sabres team, but 8-0 in the postseason? Season? I wasn't expecting that. Not at all. So we've completed two sweeps in a row. Why stop now? Let's sweep the New Jersey Devils and then sweep the Stanley Cup final and go 16-0. It's not that hard if you really think about it. So it doesn't look like you're going to be going 16-0 in the postseason because so far we split the series with the New Jersey Devils. Ironically, they're the team putting up the biggest fight. Ain't no way we lose to the New Jersey Devils out of all teams. We can't lose to this team. We're going to be forced in Game 7 with a massive 6-2 win. No, we can't lose to New Jersey. I'd rather have lost to Toronto than New Jersey. And the only reason I say that is New Jersey is a 40 win team this team finished like 15th in the entire league we're not going to lose to the team that just finished 15th so here we go game seven conference finals buffalo don't mess around here just pick up a quick seven goals okay we went to overtime here but cole caulfield's gonna be the hero he's gonna be scoring the ot winner and we're off to the stanley cup final i don't think we should have won this game new jersey outshot us 42 to 29 but spencer knight he makes big time saves in big time games and he's keeping us alive so here we are back in the stanley cup final for the second season in a row we have the buffalo sabers taking on the winnipeg jets we know what's on the line here a chance at repeating we got to complete the repeat right now so it all comes down to this who's going to be the best team in the next seven games we just need to win four of them so it shouldn't really be that difficult and right now things are looking fantastic well they were looking fantastic but unfortunately in game seven of the stanley cup final we're going to be dropping that one two to one i mean to be fair we put ourselves in a really bad position we were down three one in the stanley cup final we had to make a massive comeback winning game five and game six was huge but in game seven we just couldn't close it out and what really cost us in the stanley cup final is the big time players just weren't making Making big time plays. I mean, I shouldn't really say that because Dylan Cousins 24, Rupe Hintz 22, Tage Thompson 21, but Rasmus Dahlin, how are you minus two? Same with you, Owen Power, you were plus zero. I guess you're not technically plus zero, but you're not minus zero. You were just zero. You didn't have a positive plus minus, but it wasn't a negative plus minus. But y'all are the top two defensemen on this team. I'm expecting better than this. Meanwhile, Spencer Knight, what were your numbers looking like? A 921 to 258. We let you down, plain and simple. With these types of numbers, we should have easily been able to win a Stanley Cup. So on top of the disappointment in the playoffs, we're actually getting a lot of disappointment here in the draft as we're not going to be securing any notable players. We did get one top six potential forward, but other than that, nothing crazy. So when it comes to the re-sign phase, we're going to qualify our RFA, but the rest of these guys, we're going to be letting walk. I know a couple of these guys are rookies, but I mean, he's got medium top 6D potential. He's not going to develop into anything in the next couple years. Meanwhile, Capo Caco, I was contemplating doing a sign-in trade with him, but you know what? It's just going to make the money way too complicated, so we're going to let him walk. No, I honestly never thought I would see the day. We're going to be bringing back Dylan Cousins. We're going to have no problem extending him. Forsling, we're probably going to have to trade away because I'm not doing 9.7 for the next four years at 33 years old. But Tage Thompson... What happened to being loyal to the soil here? I want to give you an extension, bring you back to the team. $15 million. I mean, it's not quite $15 million, but 14.6. Why don't you want to stay loyal to the soil in Buffalo? We've built you up here. We made you the player you are today. We want a Stanley Cup with you. Made to back-to-back -back Stanley Cup finals with you. And now you want to leave? Despicable. Like Dylan Cousins is at least being a bit more reasonable here. We'll do 10.3 for the next seven years. Like realistically, I think the cheapest that we can get Tage Thompson for is $13 million. Do I want to spend $13 million on Tage Thompson? I don't think that's the move. I feel like that's way too much for what he provides. I think we're going to be trading him away. 
Never thought I would see the day. On top of trading him, we're also going to be getting rid of Forsling. JJ Paterka, what do you want for an extension? 5.6 to play on the third line. I don't think that's the move either. All right, this is the off season where we make a lot of trades because we got to rebuild this team slightly. You know what? Tage Thompson, I will bring you back to the team. I'm not necessarily sure if you're worth $13 million, but you know what? You're an important piece to this team, so we're going to bring you back. And this three-year extension will keep you around for the rest of the rebuild. You'll be here for all 10. I'm going to make this move. Welcome back to the Buffalo Sabres. So this is a massive high risk, high reward move. A first rounder and a second rounder along with the defense we picked up last season over to the Calgary Flames and we're going to be picking up this young defensive defenseman. So right now, I can't guarantee which line he's going to fit on. He might not fit on any of our lines. However, I do have an idea of what type of a contract he wants and if we can somehow sign him for the next four seasons at that price, then this is going to be a massive steal for us. I'm going to offer this package over. They're going to say no, but you know what? We got some more assets we can work with and I'm going to find a way to get this deal done. I'll throw a medium elite potential goaltender in this deal and hopefully that's going to be enough so we got our man so it looks like this risk is going to work out for us so far we're going to do four years at 2.9 million that's an amazing contract for an 82 overall now we just have to hope he can fail on either the second or third pairing if he can't fit then we really screwed up here but if he can fit then this is a massive deal now i was also really contemplating trading forsling away and jj paterka but you know what we're competing for stanley cups right now the team's looking fantastic i think we keep both of these guys around and we just make one last massive push here because even if we trade these two guys away we don't really have any cap space for next season so the guys we're acquiring are going to be on one-year deals as well or they're going to be incredibly cheap players so i think forsling and Baturka, it's the last dance with you guys we got to run it back for one more year so although the bottom six might have taken a slight drop off, the top six continues to look absolutely fantastic. We have this entire core running it back once again here. The third line still looking pretty solid though. I mean, Tiga Ginla, Evangelista, JJ Paterka, and the fourth line, we can work with what we have here. However, with the defense, that high risk, high reward, boy is that working off for us because this man has a perfect fit on the second line he's getting a plus four overall boost alongside forsling our top four here is absolutely unstoppable the third pairing we can work with i didn't realize we only had a 72 overall here i'm going to make a quick trade in order to improve that but i'll make that improvement after we look at the goaltending here because spencer knight keep doing what you do simple as that so this is going to be a really easy deal to get done we're actually giving more than we have to but it's a fourth and fifth rounder over to the washington capitals we're going to be picking up Hinala, and he's going to play some amazing third pairing minutes for us yeah this is an absolute no-brainer for washington relax you got a fourth and a fifth you didn't really finesse anyone so after that trade these are what the defensive pairings are looking like can't complain about this whatsoever plus five overall boost on the first line and then plus four on the second no nah, that's elite all right so this is how you know that the atlantic division is incredibly loaded right now we're fifth in the entire league which is a wild card spot 38 18 and 6 you heard that right 38 18 and 6 is a wild card spot at the trade deadline i don't know what's going on right now but things aren't right we're averaging four goals per game while allowing 3.15 i don't know what happened to the defense but it's nowhere near as good luckily we're scoring a lot of goals so that helps a lot Rupe Hintz is having a career season right now. He's got 87 points at the 62 game mark. Dylan Cousins, 82. Tage Thompson, 80. Cole Caulfield's got 64. We have four players over a point a game right now. We're scoring a lot of goals. However, we can't really keep the puck over our own net. Spencer Knight, 30 wins, two shouts, a 901 to 296. What happened to your numbers, my guy? You're better than this and you know it. So I think we have to make one move at the trade deadline in order to improve this team a bit. And I think that's going to be picking up Farifari from the San Jose Sharks. He's a great defenseman and it's really not going to cost too much for us we're going to be offering a second round pick. I'm perfectly fine with giving up a second round pick for Farivari. So the plan was to trade for Farivari and then put him in the lineup, but we do have one issue here. When we put him into the lineup, the third pairing gets a minus two boost. I don't really want to have a minus two boost, especially when it's an 83 overall and an 80 overall. So we're going to keep Hinala in the game here. He's going to be playing some third pairing minutes for us, and then they don't lose any line chemistry. So I think we're actually better off doing this. So Farivari, yes, I just gave up a second round pick for you, but you're going to be riding the pine. I know it makes absolutely no sense, but it's just the way she goes. Now the Buffalo Sabres, they might have dropped to sixth in the entire league with a 51, 24, and 7 record. But you know what? This is actually the best thing that could have happened to us. Since we secured the first wildcard spot, we're taking on the Metro Division winner. And you know who the Metro Division winner is? The New Jersey Devils who are finishing 10th in the entire league with a 43, 31, and 8 record here. We're clearly better than this team. So after we get past them, then the tough matchups will start. Also, I just need to highlight 
highlight the offense from this team. Cousins, Rupa Hints, Tage Thompson, all three of these guys are finishing with over 100 points and all of them are finishing with over 40 goals. We actually had four players scoring 40 plus goals this season. That's absolutely ridiculous. Well, Spencer Knight, he's actually looking a lot better after the trade deadline, finishing with 40 wins, two shots, a 903 and a 283. But you know what? I don't really care what the numbers are. I know I just said a 283. It's actually a 287, but that doesn't matter. We're in the postseason here and we know this guy's a postseason performer. So let's lock in here with our first round matchup, taking on the New Jersey Devils. We're actually the favorite in this matchup, even though we finished in the wild card spot. Let's just get this series over with quick and then take on the Rangers in the second round. Because that's going to be our first true tough matchup. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say Spencer Knight's pretty good. Two shouts in the first two games of this series, and he only allowed four games in the entire series. It's a quick sweep over the New Jersey Devils, and we're off to the next round. Also, the Carolina Hurricanes currently have a 3-0 series lead on the New York Rangers. Carolina might not be messing around. We better watch out for them. Okay, so our second round matchup is against the New York Rangers. They won four straight games to come back into the series and made to the second round. I am terrified of them. I also just realized we have a better record than the New York Rangers. For some reason, I thought this team won like 60 games. I don't know what I'm yapping about. I clearly don't know anything. So the Buffalo Sabres, like usual, they're going to continue to cook here. Another sweep in the second round and we're off to the conference finals. So we're basically guaranteed the Stanley Cup final at this point. We're taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs in the conference finals. We matched up against this team last year in the second round. We swept them. The year before, we also matched up against them. And we beat them then too. Toronto's not even in the same league as us. So after dominating the first two games of the series, we're going to be losing back-to-back -back games in overtime here. But you know what? That's perfectly fine because we're going to respond in game five. And then in game six, we're going to close this one out and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. Okay, never mind. We're going to be dropping that one three to one and we're off to game seven. So we got a lot of big time players and now it's time for them to make some big time plays. We're going to simulate the entire game here and Buffalo's off to the Stanley Cup final just like that. A 4-1 victory here. We were absolutely dominating. So here we are the Stanley Cup final taking on somebody we haven't taken on before. That's going to be the Minnesota Wild. This is our third straight Stanley Cup appearance. Unfortunately, we can't go for the three-peat here because we lost against Winnipeg last season. But you know what? We're ready to start another run here. Let's beat the Minnesota Wild and hoist another Stanley cup so i'm gonna be completely honest the minnesota wild they're putting up a lot bigger fight than i was expecting the series is tied two to two we're gonna be dropping game five here we can't lose to minnesota whatever you do do not lose to minnesota here i can't believe that just happened they won 39 games this season they had a 39 38 and 5 record made it to the stanley cup final and then beat the 51 win buffalo sabers no way that just happened no seriously where did minnesota finish in the standings they won 39 games they clearly weren't a good team by any means 19th in the entire league the minnesota wild 19th in the entire league and they just beat us in the stanley cup final i also want to point out they were allowing 3.5 goals per game and only scoring 3.17 how this team made to the stanley cup final i couldn't tell you i also have no clue how dallas made the playoffs look at this goal differential this team was not cooking so i can't complain with the offense from this team they just didn't step up in the big time games i don't know what to say tage thompson 16 points in 21 games i need more from you spencer knight you were fantastic 14 wins four shots a 921 and a 232 once again we're letting you down but i need to know what minnesota's goaltender was up to that man must have been locked in jesper wall said 16 wins two shots a 933 and a 223 yeah he stole them this series plain and simple unless the scoring on this team was absolutely ridiculous kirill caprice off 30 points martin h is 29 boldy's got 23 actually this team is not that bad Actually, I take that back. They're not very good. They have a top three. That's about it. But yeah, I don't know how Minnesota just took us out. So there might have been a lot of disappointment in the playoffs here. But you know what? We're bouncing back big time here because we're going to be securing a medium lead potential left winger with the 31st overall pick. He's going to be a big trade asset for us and we're going to be able to bring in another superstar player. And it looks like we're not done there because with the 95th overall pick, a medium elite potential sniper, that man's going to have a ton of trade value. We just picked up two elite players. We're making big moves here. Nah, at this point, just let me cook. A medium elite potential goaltender. Obviously, he's not going to develop in time for us. So you know what that makes him? A good trade asset. The drafting is not done there. You already know I just make amazing selections. The 191st overall, low elite potential sniper. As long as I have a draft pick, we're getting an elite potential player. And I'm going to take that logic back right now because we're just going to take a shot in this last selection. Maybe this guy's going to have top six potential. I highly doubt it. Bottom six potential. You know what? I kind of saw that one coming. So I went ahead, qualified a couple RFAs, gave us some small contracts here. But Forsling, Paterka, and Ferrari, all three of these guys are going to be walking. And I also can't forget about Jeremy Miller on he's also gonna be walking all right so we have three massive extensions to go here cole caulfield rupe hints and owen power all three of these guys want extensions are they going to be reasonable and are we going to be able to bring them back 
I don't think we're going to be able to bring all three back unless we clear up some cap space. Cole Caulfield wants 11. How much is Rupe Hintz going to want? He's probably going to want 12. So there's 23 million right there. And then we still don't have enough money to bring back Owen Power. How much money does he want? He wants 10 million. You know what? I think this is actually possible. So we're going to start with 8.5 for Owen Power, and that'll bring him back for the rest of the rebuild. He's an important piece to the team, and of course, we got to keep him around here. We're then going to move on to Rupe Hints here. We're going to be doing 11 million per year for the next four seasons. That's a pretty reasonable deal for him. So now we spent about 19.5 million here. And then we're going to finish it off with Cole Caulfield. We're going to do 10 million per year for the next eight seasons. That's going to bring us up to 29 million spent. So we only need to clear up about $5 million. That should be actually pretty easy to do. Because $5 million could be something as simple as this, Tomasino and Evangelista. Trade both of those guys away. That's going to clear up about $4.8 million. And then I think that should be enough. So I'm going to try to pick up Kasperi Kapanen from the Vancouver Canucks. He's on a one-year deal. And it's going to be Tomasino and a third-round pick. I think I'm going to have to add a bit more to this deal. Of course, I am. A third-rounder What's going to be enough. So maybe a third and a sixth can be the difference maker. I'll send that over. They're going to be rejecting that as well. I guess we'll do a third and a fifth. I don't want to do a third and a fourth, but I might have to. We'll try a third and a fifth first. They're going to be saying no to that so i guess we're going to do a third a fourth and tomasino and we're going to be picking up casperi captain in here i mean he'll be a decent player for the bottom six here and he clears up the cap space we need i can't believe i have to throw a seventh rounder in this deal like are we really going to be that stingy on a seventh rounder there we go the deal's done we're clearing up a bit of cap space for next season but we still have to trade evangelista and then our next deal is going to be evangelista and a fifth rounder over to the winnipeg jets and we're going to pick up Voronkov for the one season definitely said his name wrong but you know what it doesn't matter we cleared up money now this is where drafting elite potential players comes in handy because one of those medium elite potential prospects I just drafted, I'm going to package him up along with a medium elite potential goaltender and we're going to be acquiring Green from the Detroit Red Wings right now. He's an 84 overall. He's got himself a few X factors and he's only 20 years old. We have him under contract for the next two years. This is going to be a massive pickup for us once we get it done, of course. And I really don't know how much more we're going to have to add into this deal, but I'll do a second rounder. Hopefully that's enough. They're saying no. I'll do a second and a third, but I think that's the most I'm willing to do. That's actually a lie. I will throw in a first round pick if I have to and I guess that's exactly what we're doing a first rounder and two elite potential prospects over to the Detroit Red Wings and we're getting our guy I guess we're not getting our guy here's a third rounder I don't care what it takes we need to upgrade this team and this is going to be our final move, a prospect in Zether over to the Washington Capitals, and we're going to be picking up another young defenseman here. With that trade, our entire forward core is finished, the defensive core just got a nice upgrade, and we still have Spencer Knight in between the pipes, so I think we're ready for another Stanley Cup run. So obviously, the big six is back here, Cousins, Rupe Hintz, Tage Thompson, Cole Caulfield, Quinton Byfield, Zach Benson, all these guys were giving out extensions, well I mean the top guys were, and we're keeping them all around. The bomb six here, not looking as good as usual, but hey, we could definitely rock with what we have. The defense, on the other hand, this might be the best defense we've ever had. Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power, Kiskinen, Green, and then our third pairing here? Nah, no team can mess with us right now. The only concern I do have is Spencer Knight dropped to an 89 overall. I have no clue why he dropped two overalls because he's still him. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just go make another Stanley Cup final and not choke this time around. We've made three Stanley Cup finals in a row and we've only won one of them. We should have completed a three-peat by now. So enough messing around, boys. Let's close this one out. Zero trades are being made. We're not even looking at the stats of this team, but I do want to show this at the trade deadline. A 51, 10, and 2 record. We have as many wins at the trade deadline than we did last season. If we're not going 16 and 0 in the postseason, then this is rigged straight up. All right, so you already know what we got to do here. We just need to close it out. First in the entire league, 62, 14, and 6. An absolute dominant offense, while the defense, the best in the entire league. We were the best offensive and the best defensive team. The scoring numbers on this team, incredible. Tage Thompson, 101. Dylan Cousins, 100. Rupe Hintz, 97. Cole Caulfield, 81. The scoring on this team, ridiculous like usual. While the goaltending numbers, the best I think we've ever seen. Spencer Knight, 48 wins, 3 shots, a 913, a 258. These actually aren't the best numbers we've ever seen, but they're the best backup numbers we've ever seen. A 916 and 233. Shout out to Bailey for holding it down. The dude was an absolute beast this season. But it just don't matter how good we are in the regular season. 16-0, that's the minimum. Anything less than that, unacceptable. Now, the fact that I'm expecting four straight sweeps from this team, that's telling you how good we are. I have never expected four sweeps in a row. I mean, that's an absolute lie. The past two postseasons, I've expected that. Just don't choke in the Stanley Cup final. Let's bring it home this time. So the dream of 16-0 was already dead in the first round because in game three, we lost 8-0. The fact that that we were able to respond from that's actually pretty surprising normally when you lose a game eight nothing it doesn't matter what lead you had in the series it's wraps 
So we're moving on to the conference finals here because we're not losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not even acknowledging this second round matchup. I'm just trying to figure out who we're going to be taking on in the conference finals. So we decide to give Toronto a couple games here. Currently, the series is tied 2-2, two to two, but I'm not afraid. We're going to be winning game five here, and then we're going to take them out in game six. Eight to three in game five. If that's not dominance, I don't know what is, and we're going to close this series out in six games. Okay, we're going to game seven. That's not ideal, but obviously, I'm not going to be scared of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That team's just full of a bunch of frauds. We're the Buffalo Sabres, currently the best team in the entire league, a 62 win team. The Toronto Maple Leafs aren't beating us. So we're off to the conference finals here. We're winning this game 5 to 2. Yeah, yeah, we won that game 5 to 2. For some reason, the game's glitching right now and it won't allow me to go to the conference finals. I'm not really too sure what's going on here. I think they got the logos mixed up. Yeah, I know. I've encountered this glitch a couple times. We're actually the Toronto Maple Leafs in this situation. Like the logos just got swapped. Not really too sure why that happens. And guys, it's time to celebrate we just won the stanley cup in a sweep over the chicago blackhawks i don't know what's going on right now because i mean that glitch is still going on where the Toronto maple leafs logo is actually supposed to be ours because we won that game five to two i'm pretty sure i'm like 99 percent sure we won that game five to two and then we went off to the conference finals smoked the new york rangers like usual and then swept the blackhawks for the stanley cup that stupid glitch just had to ruin the video huh yeah we're just going to completely ignore what happened here uh the second line let us down quentin byfield minus Minus seven, Cole Caulfield minus seven, and Zach Benson minus four. If y'all didn't play like complete and utter garbage, we would have won a Stanley Cup. So I'm not just gonna blame the second line. You're facing some of this blame as well. An 897 and a 308. What happened to the Spencer Knight we used to have? Because this guy right here, he ain't it. So on top of that glitch ruining that Stanley Cup run for us, we're not gonna be getting any good prospects in the draft here because we only had two selections. I'm not going to spend too much time rebuilding this team because we just won 62 games. We just fell apart in the postseason. I'm going to bank on that not happening again. So we are going to bring one guy back here during the re-sign phase. It's going to be Voronkov. We're going to do 2.75 for the next three seasons. He had a pretty good year in the third line, so we better keep him around. The rest of these guys, though, we're going to be letting them walk. So we don't have a lot of money to work with here, but we do have enough for one extension. That's going to be going to Rasmus Dahlin. We're doing 11.5 for the next three seasons. That's going to keep him around for next season, which is going to be the final year of the rebuild. Meanwhile, Green, we're keeping you around for this season, and I'm going to trade you next season because I can qualify you as an RFA. We just don't have the money for you, especially since you want $11 million. That's just not happening. So I qualified Wahlberg as an RFA, but you know what? I really want to bring him back to the team for this season. So we'll do a one-year deal at 1.9 million. So as long as the top six is here, we can clearly compete for Stanley Cups. It's the usual suspects, Cole Caulfield, Tage Thompson, Rupe Hintz, Quinton Byfield, Zach Benson, Dylan Cousins. While the bottom six over the past couple of years has definitely been taking some hits, and it's got to the point where we have a 77 overall playing on our fourth line. Luckily, he has a decent enough line fit here, so I'm not too concerned. When it comes to the defense, the top four here is the best in the entire league. No doubt about it. While well, the third pairing, we're not going to discuss a 74 overall. But we don't have to worry about that lackluster third pairing because we have a 91 overall Spencer Knight in net for us. He's an absolute beast and I'm ready to go on another Stanley Cup run with him. So unlike the past couple years, I'm not even going to bother stopping at the trade deadline here. We have absolutely no money when it comes to cap space. I don't want to trade a ton of assets away because like I said, we have no money to work with. So if I'm trading assets away, that means I have to get a player that's worth about $1 million. And what type of a player are you going to get for $1 million? So there's no point wasting our time here. Let's get right to the end of the season, then hoist a Stanley Cup. So at the end of the season, of course, it should be no surprise the Buffalo Sabres are the best team here with a 57, 20, and 5 record. And I do want to mention after the trade deadline, this team went like 17 and 4. They were absolutely incredible, averaging four goals per game, but only allowing 2.52. As long as we perform like this in the postseason, we're easily winning a Stanley Cup. But as we know, things don't always go our way. The top six on this team is incredible, like usual. Tage Thompson, 101 points, Dylan Cousins, 91, Rupe Hintz, 84. Zach Benson 83, Quinton Byfield 78, while Cole Caulfield's picking up 76. And the goaltending number is absolutely incredible. We already knew this. Spencer Knight 42 wins, four shots to 915 and 247. I don't need to mention the significance of this postseason right here. We're in year number nine. It's our second last postseason. Let's go out with a bang here and win a Stanley Cup, and then next season finish off with a repeat. But first, we got to get past the New Jersey Devils, and that's definitely not going to be an easy matchup. Okay, I was joking when I said.
said this wasn't going to be an easy matchup for us. I honestly thought we were going to sweep the Devils, but for some reason, this is actually a closer series than I expected. We're winning game five. That's going to be a massive one for us, and we're going to close it out here in game six. Ain't no way we're off to game seven in the first round. We were the best team in the entire league with the best offense and best defense, and now we're off to game seven. Whatever y'all do, do not choke in the first round here. If we lose in the second round, I can deal with that, but not the first round. Five nothing. We lost five nothing in game number seven here. Jack Hughes picked up a hat trick. I'm sick to my stomach. I am actually so annoyed right now. Five nothing in game seven. In the ninth season of this rebuild, 5-0 in game 7. Have we not learned anything? I also do want to mention we got shut out in the past two games. New Jersey shut us out in back-to-back -back games when we were the best offense in the entire league, averaging four goals a game. I got nothing else to say. So here we go. The final year of the rebuild. We're entering year number 10 here. No more messing around. We got to get this team one more Stanley Cup. I'm not going to fold 10 years with only one Stanley Cup. And what makes it even worse, we made three Stanley Cup finals. But yet we only have one Stanley Cup. It just ain't right. Okay. Okay, this is exactly what we needed right here. A medium leap potential right winger. Medium leap potential right wingers, tons of trade value. We're going to be trading for some incredible rookies in this final season. Our bottom six is going to be all 85 overall rookies. That's the plan at least. Okay, so yeah, that thing about our entire bottom six being all rookies, I take that back. I didn't realize how few draft picks we had. We only had three. I was banking on getting a couple of medium elite potential players here. We're only getting one. So we are going to be giving out one extension here during the re-sign phase. It's going to Wahlberg. We're giving him 1.9 for the next three seasons. Of course, we don't need him for three seasons, but that's the contract I'm giving him. Also, I'm qualifying our two young defensemen here. Both of them are going to be traded. Like Green wants $12 million. We have five. So obviously that's not going to happen. So as we know, we can't afford Green. But you know who we can't afford? Hines on a one-year contract. He's getting paid $1 million. And he's an 87 overall rookie. I mean, he's not really a rookie. He's still on his rookie deal though. So I'm going to try to make this deal. They're going to be saying no, but it's not going to take too much more. They basically have identical trade values. I'll give you a fifth rounder as well. Hopefully that's enough to make the difference here. There we go. We got Hines. So this is going to be our next move. We're going to be picking up Frolov for the bottom six here. He's an 85 overall who picked up 20 goals and 25 helpers last season. He was absolutely fantastic for the Winnipeg Jets. And I'm hoping that production continues on the Buffalo Sabres. I don't care what it takes. We're making this trade. So a second and a third along with a prospect wasn't enough. Maybe a prospect and two second rounders will be. They're still going to be saying no to that. So let's throw in a third. So here we go. The third rounder has been added. Is this going to be enough to get the deal done? They're still saying no. I'll do two second rounders and two third rounders. Draft picks don't mean anything anymore. We're trying to win right now. Y'all are telling me this still isn't enough. All right, we're taking out all these draft picks right here. It's going to be our prospect and a first round pick. That should be more than enough to get this deal done. I'm going to send that over. They're saying no. We're going to be doing a first and a third rounder. Hopefully Hopefully this is enough. If I have to do a first and a second, I will. We're doing a first, a second, and a third. I don't care what it takes. We're getting Froloff on this team. So similar to the last deal we're doing, it's going to be a prospect, a first, a second, and third rounder. We're going to be picking up Walker from the Nashville Predators. He's an 83 overall. He can play some third pairing minutes for us. He's going to be a massive upgrade to this team. And just like that, the deal's done. So our defense is getting some massive upgrades. Our forward core saw some massive upgrades. This team's ready for success. And with our final trade, it's going to be the defenseman we picked up last season, along with two fourth round picks over to the Anaheim Ducks. And we're going to be picking up Rourke. He's going to be the final piece of the puzzle for us. And now it's time to win our last Stanley Cup. So here we go, the last stands. Dylan Cousins, Rupe Hintz, Tage Thompson, Cole Caulfield, Quinton Byfield, Zach Benson. The bottom six has never looked this good, and wait till you see the defense. Because this defense right here, less than two goals per game. Dahlien, Hines, Kiskinen, Owen Power, Walker, Rourke. This defense is going to be absolutely unstoppable, and they're also going to be producing a lot offensively. And to finish it all off, it's the man, the myth, the legend, Spencer Knight, 91 overall. Time for one last Stanley Cup with this core. If we can't win at least two in this video, then I don't know what's going on. Also, similar to last season, we have really no free cap space here, so we're not going to be able to make any moves at the trade deadline, but I think that's going to be okay for us because we're going to win 70 games. Not 60, but 70 games. So here we go. First in the entire league, we were here last season, 54, 20, and 8. The thing that annoys me though, if you go off wins, we actually came in second to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Y'all saw our team, right? How are we second? It doesn't make sense. 
the scoring numbers on this team are incredible like usual like look at all the guys above 80 points look at all the guys above 70 points even 60 points this team knows how to score goals and defensively we sort of know how to keep the puck out of the net spencer knight 43 wins two shots a 901 to 286 these numbers don't give me a lot of confidence i'm just going to keep it a stack i need better from you now all i'm going to say heading into the postseason here do not lose in the first round whatever you do do not lose in the first round and then if you do make it to the second round don't lose to the toronto maple leafs we can't end on that so far we haven't really had any issues with the new york rangers we currently have a 3-1 series lead and ideally we close this one out in game five here we're not blowing a 3-1 series lead we can't blow a 3-1 series lead in the first round here. Thankfully, we're going to be closing it out in Game 6. However, I do have one issue with how we performed here. The New York Rangers were a 37-win team. A 37-win team really put the pressure to us. After struggling against the New York Rangers in the first round, we are going to be moving on to the second here. But I guess we don't have to worry about the Toronto Maple Leafs. That team's a bunch of frauds. We already knew that. We're taking on the Florida Panthers here. Toronto was really second in the entire league to only lose in the first round. Couldn't be me. So after dropping game number one, the Buffalo Sabres have got themselves on a roll here. They've won three straight games, and they're looking to make it four straight in game number five here. That's exactly what's happening. We're off to the conference finals. So we're four games away from the Stanley Cup final, looking to take on either the Nashville Predators or San Jose Sharks. I don't think Nashville or San Jose is actually that strong of a team. So if we can get past Pittsburgh, we should be sweeping the Stanley Cup final. Similar to the last two rounds, we're dominating like usual, and we're going to close this one out in game number five here, the Stanley Cup final once again, the fourth time we've made it in this video. Don't choke. Whatever y'all do, do not choke in the Stanley Cup final. So here we go, the Stanley Cup final. Four more wins is all we need. Four more wins in our fourth Stanley Cup final appearance. We've only won one Stanley Cup so far. We got to finish with another. So here we go. We're going to simulate through the first five games. Honestly, I don't even think we're going to need five games here. I guess we are going to need five games because currently we have a 3-2 series lead. But we're going to close this out in game number six. Do not go to game seven. Whatever you do, don't go to game seven. We're going to be finishing off the 10-year rebuild with a Stanley Cup. you love to see it. So the offense from the top six is what really won us the Stanley Cup. Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, Rupe Hintz. Shout out to Hines. 18 points in 22 games. The dude was an absolute beast. Cole Caulfield, Zach Benson. But the real savior of this team, Spencer Knight. 16 wins, 5 losses, 1 OT lost, 1 shutout, a 923 and a 234. If you made it to the end of the video here, comment Spencer Knight. Because without this man, not only are we not going to make it to one Stanley Cup final, we're also not going to be taking home two Stanley Cups.